Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Please check out the video uh, from earlier on today. We're back here with the merch on. Check it out. Link in the description below. Get yours for the Wembley final. We've got loads of really cool stuff. Hoodies, hats, cups. Cups. Uh, we've got T-shirts, all of your favorite bits. We've got Archie Gray, Chris Somerville, Georgie Let's Go. All of this fantastic stuff. Mr. Jay Coyle will, will tell you as well, uh, the giveaway winner. Link in the description below. Make sure you check out everybody. Patreon is available as well. Make sure you check out link in the description as well. Okay, so what's going on in today of football? What's happened in the day of football? Well, the Premier League has come to a conclusion. Nobody cares until Leeds United are in it. But yeah, what's going on in terms of Leeds United LUFC with regards to, uh, you know, transfers and all this sort of stuff. So the first bit of news is Max Verber. Now, this is extremely interesting. Leeds United are bargaining with Borussia Mönchengladbach behind closed doors about the real valuation of the centre-back. Obviously, the Austrian went out to Germany earlier on to further his career in the Bundesliga, and he's actually done extremely well. Farker wanted to keep him in the championship rope. We all know that, but he was very, very keen on leaving the club, and he was one of those individuals who, who just wanted, wanted to get out really as soon as possible, which I think was quite disappointing because we'd all sort of prepared a little bit uh, for life with Verba in the championship at one point. And sort of I was thinking he was going to be the Zimmerman of Daniel Farkas Norwich in the championship. And I think it obviously, look, he's been really good in the Bundesliga this season and, and he'd have been an excellent addition. I actually saw him play. Uh, I watched Cologne beat Mussing, Borussia Mönchengladbach 3 nil or 3 1, I think it was. And Verba was playing. Cheer up, lad. But what the, what is the, what's the big news today? The big news is that apparently Leeds United are going to be asking double. Double the price of which Borussia Mönchengladbach are only willing to pay. So there's going to be some serious negotiation there. Leeds want 14.6 million. Borussia Mönchengladbach are only wanting to pay 7.7 .7 million quid. Now, this will obviously be enhanced by Leeds United being in the Premier League. We all know that. If Leeds are in the Premier League, we'll just turn around and go, all right, we're well, not having him then. We'll take him back and he can sit on our bench. Or, because of how well he's done in the Bundesliga, they'll turn around to Verber and say, we're well, not going to Borussia Mönchengladbach, but if you want to go somewhere else, you can go somewhere else. But there's the other scenario as well. Alternatively, if Leeds get back to the Premier League, I think some of the deserters are going to want to come back, aren't they? Uh, because it's Premier League football, more exposure for them and potentially more money. We'll wait and see what happens contract-wise with a lot of them. But yeah, it is going to be fascinating to see how this one develops with Verba because look, normally there's sort of fine margins here, fine margins there. But it feels like and it looks like and it sounds like according to reports that Leeds won't budge. And then even if they're in the championship, there is going to be some negotiation on that £7.7 .7 million fee. Now, I think that's right for Leeds. We bought him for more than that. And he's essentially done better. He's done better than than what than than you know what his his valuation is. You know, if you buy him for a certain amount, if you buy him for a certain profit, then make a loss on him. It's not going to look great when it comes to PSR as well. So I think it's uh, I think Leeds United are needing to get more of a profit for him. So I think that's really good that they're doing hard negotiation right now for him. And we'll wait and see how that develops. What else is going on behind the scenes? Leeds United are now, according to some reports today, negotiating with Everton about Jack Harrison. Now his contract runs out in 2027. You know, if Leeds remain in the championship, are they only going to be willing to let Jack Harrison go on loan? That's going to be interesting to see. Whereas if they're in the Premier League, they'll be more than willing to let Jack Harrison go on a permanent deal. Now, the permanent deal is said to have been sort of north of 10 million quid, maybe south of 15 million. What do you guys think in the comment section below with regards to that? Does it need to be more? Do Leeds United need to sort of <clears throat> ask the question there? You know, Jack Harrison has done, he's played, what, 31, 32 games for Everton. When you're looking at that, stock will be high. I think he's got three goals, four assists. Not bad, not too bad, not great. And it is very Jack Harrison. And the reports are from Everton that he's he's sort of two in and out and his consistency is poor. And to be honest, I don't want to see Jack Harrison back in the Premier League. I am so sick of Jack Harrison's. And I was sick to the back teeth of Jack Harrison's inconsistency. He's a favourite within the fan base because he was part of the Bielsa boys and sentiment rules. Uh, sort of strong with a lot of Leeds United fans, but he was nowhere near good enough. You look at our front line now, he wouldn't be getting in our front line right now. And I'd probably start Jane Nantony ahead of him, to be honest with you. He's way too inconsistent, way too many times of which he went like that with Jack Harrison over him doing something magic. He was, I don't think he was ever properly good enough. Look, the stats 
unbelievable for his time at Leeds United in the Premier League. In the Championship, they weren't too bad either. But for me, that's Marcelo Bielsa. It's a product of Marcelo Bielsa. Jack Harrison, for me, has always been an average football player who, like a lot of that Leeds United team under the great Argentinian, was bolstered. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to see him back at Leeds. I think we've got more right now of which we can be excited about. You know, we've got so much talent within our ranks that if we went up to the Premier League, a lot of that talent wouldn't want to leave anyway. And we have the fortune of being able to, you know, the fortunate standpoint of being able to have these assets on our book in terms of, you know, your Jack Harrisons and, and your Verbers have been able to get capital for these players as well and potentially be in a better state than what you were when you actually first got them through the door. We could make profit on Verber. We could make profit on Harrison. And then you're looking around and you're going, bloody hell, I don't know how we've wrangled that, but we're actually in a better state. We're in the green of which when we're, we were looking at being in the red for a lot of these situations, probably barring Jack, uh, barring Brendan Aronson and, 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 and Rasmus Christensen. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me know what you guys would think in the comment section below. Do you think, would you keep hold of Jack Harrison regardless? Would you let him go? But ultimately as well, what do you think valuation-wise? What happens there? What do Leeds need to do when it comes to those those pairings? I think they're some of the the the, the, the uh, actually they're probably the most valuable assets in term, in terms of turning a profit from. You might look at Mark Rocker in there as well, but you know that sort of valuation for Verber and Harrison maybe up to twenty million is going to be good for Leeds. So, next topic of conversation. I wanted to, I was speaking about this in the stream earlier on. It is Daniel Farker versus Russell Martin and the the heated background between those two now giving you guys a little bit of background into what exactly happened Daniel Farker came into Norwich and essentially turned around and went I don't want any of these players I think there was Naismith there at the time Russell Martin but Russell Martin was a, a god at Norwich you know he's been he's been captain he'd been there for years Mr Norwich it'd essentially be like Farker coming in and with experienced players you know this season Probably, you know, just being like to Liam Cooper, yeah, you're out, you're training with the reserves. Yeah, you're not featuring whatsoever. That's what he did with Russell Martin. So he sent him over to the reserves, didn't get along well with him. Russell Martin, in pretty much two or three interviews, said that, look, I'm not happy with this. I can't say too much, and I won't say too much, but I'm not happy with what's going on at the minute. A lot of Norwich players as well, the experienced heads, were completely cast aside by Daniel Farker. And a lot of them felt very, very aggrieved by it. And I'm sure in, in, in some post interviews, he said that as well, you know, I think uh, with, with, with sort of a couple of Norwich podcasters as well, he's pretty much said that on there. So there is a bit of a history between <clears throat> Daniel Farker and Russell Martin. And listen, it's going to be a tasty affair at Wembley, but when you sort of left out the side that you absolutely love, there was no explanation from, you know, the club as, as to what's happened with Farker and Farker just completely disarmed Russell Martin from being at the club when he was the captain. Was there a power issue? Did you feel like Daniel didn't like having them experienced players around who, who had um, been there for a while? Well, he hadn't had it, had he? He was an under-23s yeah. manager at, at Dortmund. Um, and there wasn't a problem, really. It was never it was never personal. There was never a power issue. In fact, I probably, and, and maybe stupidly, I think a lot of people have said, I really tried to help him even when I was out of it, especially with the young lads, um, with James and, and the Murphy boys and people like that. Because they can, it's up and down when you're young, and it? It, yeah. it's difficult to be consistent in your in your behaviour and your performance, um, especially when you know you're a good player. So I still try to play a role in the dressing room, but I think it was obvious to us, I mean myself and, and Nazy, a bit different with Wes because he's a different kind of player. And I think Wes would always, even when he was on the bench, he's got a chance of coming on and, and playing and, and changing a game, which he's done on loads of times. But um, yeah, I think we knew Cami as well. I think. It was going to change. It was just how long it was going to change. And the club probably needed it to, to a certain yeah, point. Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, I it was great to Chris. bring young yeah. players through. We and could have um, role, we? we could have probably played a role, but from the outside, I think um, it was time for a change. Yeah. And now you see the benefits. That's sort of a little bit more of the backstory, everybody. And it's going to be fascinating to see how these two butt heads at when. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below to what we've been speaking about today. Are you scared of Russell Martin Southampton? What do you think of the transfer rumours, everybody? I'll see you in a bit.